How's it going? Uh, today I'm going to try to give you some tips on how to choose the right bowing ball. Um, I have here a bunch of different types of balls uh, in a range of different sizes, everything from 30 millimeter up to 3 inches at the end there. Um, the first thing you really want to consider is your hand size. If you've got smaller hands, you may want to start off with a smaller ball, um, roughly between 45, 40 millimeter, somewhere around there. Um, smaller balls than that are better off for uh, doing multiple ball work. Um, they tend to be more of a decorative type of item. They're really light. You can spin them, but they're not that great at uh, giving any kind of weight behind them. They're great for little finger dexterity type movements. Um, you know, trying to spin them in, in different parts of your hand. You know, in the palm. But for the most part, they're not that great for actually spinning, and they're not uh, that heavy to help in any kind of Chinese therapy medicine, if you're using them for that purpose. Um, the, vid the videos that I do mostly have the 45 millimeter, and I find these are a good size for my hand. Everything's relative, basically. You know, it, it, when you're starting off, you may want to try to get a size that is roughly this large in your hands, depending on how big your hands are. Um, if you've got really large hands, I wouldn't start with anything smaller than a 40 or 45 millimeter because your hands will just kind of get too confused. Um, it's good to have something with a good amount of weight and a good size that you can spin fairly freely. Um, I recommend starting off with a gold or a silver color. Um, these tend to be more, more durable. They don't tend to chip or crack as easily. They will dent if you drop them on something hard or scratch if you drop them against something rough, but uh, for the most part, they're a good durable ball. Cloisonne balls, these enameled balls, do have a tendency to chip if they're dropped or something is dropped upon them, so be real careful. Um, I dropped that giant chrome one on this ball and that cracked it pretty good. So, you always want to be careful. Uh, try always doing it over a carpet, uh, over the couch, if you're laying down on the couch watching TV, you know, keep your hand low so it's not going to drop from a great distance or do any damage to it. Um, let's see. The last type we have over here uh, for bowding balls are the stone type. And from what I've read, stone are the best because uh, stone are not... Basically, there's no metal in here that is touching your hands. And for Chinese therapy, metal is said to uh, trap your key energy. Um, as opposed to letting it flow through your body. So stone are great to have, but they are much more fragile. Uh, if you drop these on something hard, you can crack them open, take large chips out, and really when you scratch or chip these, you do feel them in your hand if you spin them right. Um, because every now and then that chip will touch your skin and you'll feel it and you'll know, you'll go, oh, that's where that chip is and it pisses you off. So always be careful with them. Um, if you've got larger hands, you can also step up to something like a billiard ball. Um, these are a good size, they've got a decent weight to them, and they're fairly cheap. I found these at a flea market for about a dollar a piece. So, you know, not that bad. Um, the next size up, now if you have, I have small hands, but you can work your way up to any size ball. It just takes a lot of practice and, uh, you know, moving slowly. You want to start with something like a 45 and then slowly work your way up until you can do something like these two and a half inch acrylic contact balls. Um, these have a decent weight. They're actually fairly lighter than you would think. Um, these are also black light responsive. Uh, they'll glow blue under a black light. Um, but as you can see, even though I have small hands, I can still spin these without them touching. And this is a method that uh, contact jugglers call palm spinning. And it does derive back from Bao Ding. But you can do any kind of number of balls if you're doing three or more, you really want to start off with a smaller ball and work your way up until you can get a nice smooth movement and uh, you can do some types of isolations and things like that. You know, spin four balls at the same time. Just have fun with it. Um, now these are more for contact juggling. You can look that up in other videos online. You'll find some great stuff. Um, but there's all kinds of great stuff you can do with these larger balls. And even though you can spin them singularly, these are three inches, uh, it is still possible to spin them without them touching, even if you have small hands. 
Uh, the last two types I have are for extreme bowding um, or extreme palm spinning. They're more for hand exercise and uh, extreme hand strength. I don't recommend you start off with this unless you've actually been doing it for a while. These are a set of actual glass balls. They're made for decoration, but as you can see, I can still spin them if I'm very careful with them. And these are great for a forearm exercise because after doing this for five or ten minutes you really feel it all the way up your arm and into your shoulder. And uh, after doing these for a long time I've got some, some great strength in my hands, great grip, and uh, great dexterity with my fingers. These are a set of Xer balls. They're made for toss juggling. Uh, they're made by Dubay, and uh, I also use these occasionally for Bao Ding. They've got a sticky surface, and it's just a you know rubber ball, and if you have something that isn't very smooth, they'll tend to stick to each other if you do not keep them separated. So these are pretty much impossible to spin if you're trying to keep them touching, but they do really work the fingers and the forearm and the wrist if you can uh, spin them without them touching. But like I said, I would not step up to something like this unless you have a lot of practice. This can actually do damage to your wrist and your fingers if you don't have enough strength in them. So, these are a bunch of different things you should decide when buying your ball. And, uh, you know, hope you guys have good luck with it. Take care.